Yo, my name is Ismail Marika and today I'm looking for a medal. It's really serious work, you know, spark coming out from the grander. But if you're an artist, you can just imagine what you want to do to turn this medal into the art. From piles of abandoned metal littered across Arnhem Land, a new art movement has begun. The ballad just throw this away, they don't care. Let's pick it up and let's turn that into an art. Like we did park and the poles. And sometimes the patterns coming off, that's why the reason pick all these silver ones, so it can stay there. We're in a remote part of the Northern Territory, in Yirrkala, on the land of the Yongu. The 1,000 plus kilometre drive from Darwin is bumpy at the best of times. But during the wet season, monsoonal rains can render it pretty much inaccessible, leaving even the most powerful four-wheel drives in its wake. Yongu artists are bound by practice to use materials sourced from the land in their art. But when artist Gunbi Ganamba started etching patterns into a rusted over water tank that he'd found discarded as rubbish on his country, he was able to convince Yongu elders that these thrown away materials were now part of the land and could be used for sacred art alongside traditional materials. I need to share my, my skills to others get the arm walk and walk together. Intricate ochre paintings on bark and wood, for which Byongyu artists are best known, have long toured far beyond the NT. The bark paintings of the artists of Yakala are recognised throughout the world. Back in the 60s, they gained further prominence after sending a bark petition to Parliament House, protesting against a mine development on their land. So it probably comes as little surprise that they are once more pushing the boundaries of their art practice, but this time into slightly noisier territory. The wife pushing me to yeah. get away from the too, too um. many noise. That's what she said. Now the work of eight Yongu artists has made the long journey to Darwin for the exhibition Murrin, a story of metal from the east. In the Northern Territory, when you're replacing a sign with some new edict, you just drop the sign on the ground next to the sign. There's no recycling. And the Yongu have taken these faded orders and directives and commands from far away in a foreign language, and they've repurposed them into something beautiful. People see patterns, but if you can read, it's actually text. It's hundreds of 30 to 50 stanza songs. So like the Iliad, or the Odyssey, or maybe the Old Testament. These songs have been converted not to text, as in those cases, but to patterns. These song lines, passed down by those with the authority and ceremonial knowledge, detail the all-encompassing system that connects the land, people, plants and animals. It's the same old song line. The story is still the same, but in a young way, we know the country, we sort of do that with the Dremel and we know how the style can come out. No, no mistakes. mistakes yeah. Everything measurement, it's here. Each one of these signs converts to its own individual book, which is held in the mind and sung orally by all of these artists, except you probably don't have the patience to wait for the week that it would take them to sing every one of these patterns. Artist and filmmaker Ishmael Marika has worked with steel for the first time and has digitised his carving for this animation. The spear represents you're a sharp man, you're a strong man, and your word is like a spear coming out through your mouth. So spear means everything. Ishmael's work references the shovel-headed spears made by Yongu long before European arrival. The tradesmen from Indonesia came. They're also bringing metals and trading with the Yongu people, like machetes and knives, metal to work with to make spearheads. Yongu were working metal, as you see here, 
uh, before the arrival of English people on the continent. So at the same time that this is a contemporary, exciting, modern form of artwork, it's an, an art form that predates Captain Cook. The richness of Yongu art has long been recognised, but what continues to draw in the crowds is the depth and the distinctiveness of making art the Yongu way. These pieces of art are stunning, but for me, because you're recycling discarded metal, which then pollutes our country, you are really doing a huge job for caring for country, and I thank you for that. The art that we do is more like caring and sharing, like a family way of doing it, because it gives the strength and the power. One painting is it, not enough. It's three or four as a family, and that's what we call the legacy that we pass on to our generation.